Hey everybody, welcome to Priddle Mondays, where the puzzles are real and the cookies don't matter. How is everybody doing today, Monday? Oh, Evan Penn, Velvet Hippo, thanks for coming in today. Today is a special episode of Priddle Mondays, where I'm going to go for two hours, my first ever two-hour live stream. Hey, Skylark, happy Monday to you too. I'm going to do a special two hours, so we're going to be here for twice as long as what I normally do. Uh, Cal Lazars and K-Pro are off until one week from today, Monday, August 12th, so I'm going to go for a longer show. Hey, Lori James, glad, happy to be here. Setting up my excuse ahead of time. 117 here. Is that the temperature, Velvet Hippo? Holy cow. <laughs> 117 degrees i'm assuming that's degrees uh yeah so priddle mondays what are they we do puzzles and riddles we work on them collectively we try to get the answer together if somebody can get the answer i give them an emoji cookie i have a discord channel you're able to guess the puzzles and riddles in the chat you can also do it on my discord channel over voice if you want to do it that way if you have any puzzles or riddles or a particular website you'd like me to try, my email address is ajrainville1973 at gmail.com. Arizona, okay, I, 117 degrees, even a dry heat, that, that's pretty rough, 117 degrees. I'm, uh, I'm out inspecting bridges in Houston, and it doesn't get quite that hot, but it is quite humid down here. So as I've been doing these past couple beginnings of the shows, we're going to go to Mysterious Writings, which is where we go for our armchair treasure hunts. Armchair treasure hunts is what we're trying to get good at by doing these puzzles and riddles. And this one was a, an article several weeks ago called How to Get Started in Armchair Treasure hum Hunting. Uh, we're down to the fifth choice, and this one is from the treasure hunt that was, that was uh, completed. I think it was completed. Called A Treasure's Trove. It came out in 2004. And the main thing I want to introduce or reinforce, if you're familiar with it already, is the Polybia Square. The Polybia Square is something I mentioned briefly in my show on Saturday, where I was talking about the Sacred Scarab. It's, uh, it looked like uh, a Polybia Square because it's a five by five box where you have one letter uh, represented in each box and the Polybia Square code is you choose from row and column. So you've got one through five for the rows, one through five for the columns. And that's how you sort of hide something in a code where you use a series of numbers. Uh, two numbers where it represents the row and the column to get the thing. It was not it was not used as a Polybia Square in the Sacred Scarab, but it certainly looked like one. Here you had what looked like a Polybia Square and you had to use a different solution to get the answer for the Sacred Scarab, which was a treasure hunt that was completed by Mysterious Writings. So, in a treasure's trove, they used a Polybia Square, but because, according to Jenny Kyle here, a Polybia Square is one that's relatively easy to decode, they used something a little bit different here, in that they used the code and it was hidden in an image, and in this case it was this leaf where, for example, they wanted to hide the letter for, for one particular letter for this that this leaf represented, it was three, four. And so they have these little veins on each side of the leaf where in order to hide three, four, they put it that code within the image of a leaf. So this is an example of, you know, I'm, I'm not the best at codes either, but if we see something and we can transfer something in an image and then transfer it into a number and maybe two numbers maybe it's a code that's a polybia square where you use the two numbers to get a letter in order to translate the code skylark says by the way i got the pdf for the treasure hunt you recommended that beetle is a click beetle if that helps yep uh it, it is a click beetle skylark i'm going to go over the treasure hunt by the art of hidden messages uh in the middle of my show so in 55 minutes skylark if, if you can hang out for that long 
Uh, I'm going to talk about the Art of Hidden Messages because I worked on it myself uh, yesterday. Uh, I had some help. I had some help on it also, and I'm going to share some ideas because it hasn't been solved. I I remember when the Art of Hidden Messages came out with the booklet, and those those treasure hunts were figured out relatively quickly. I kind of expected that this one get would get solved even the same day. You know, I know today is only the day after it was released, although it was released in the morning yesterday, and here we are in the evening the next day. So it's been almost two days, but I kind of expected it to get solved, but it hasn't been solved yet. So I'm going to share some ideas that I found. I have not solved it, but I'm going to share some ideas, and that's going to happen in 55 minutes. Meanwhile, we're here for puzzles and riddles. So we're going to do some riddles to start off because I because I think the riddles are the best. We're trying to improve our lateral thinking. We're trying to get, you know, improve our vocabulary. We're trying to think outside the box in order to help us with these armchair treasure hunts so that we, you know, sometimes there's a logical progression in how you solve them uh, in the, not just armchair treasure hunts, but other types of puzzles. We're trying to work on our lateral thinking. Yeah, sure, Skylark. Make sure you stick around for another 54 minutes. <laughs> so this first riddle, and these are called kid riddles. I think I started off with some, some ones that were too hard last time. So we're going to start. Theoretically, these are easier. And this one, this first one kind of sounds like it's a joke. What did the baseball glove say to the ball? What did the baseball glove say to the ball? Is it going to be something like you're quite the catch or something like that? <laughs> I have a feeling it's, these are going to be kind of jokey, punny type of riddles. <laughs> what did the baseball glove say to the ball? Skylark thinks you are a nice catch. I, I'm, I, I said that, but I'm not 100% certain if that's what it is. <coughs> Catch you later. I like that, Jimmy Slomo. <clears throat> All right, let's see what the answer is. Catch you later. Wow. <laughs> That's exactly what Jimmy Slomo said. Well, I'm going to give a cookie to Skylark and Jimmy Slomo. Cookie for Skylark. Let me bring up the next one. If two snakes marry, what will their towels say? Mm. If two snakes marry, what will their towels say? There's a cookie for Jimmy Slomo. If two snakes marry, what will their towels say? I'm trying to think of different synonyms for marriage. His and hers. <laughs> oh, I hope that's it. Oh, Bev the Hippo also think it's his and hers. Oh, is that is that what it's going to be? I, these are very plenty. His and hers. Good job, Lori James. You just beat out Velvet Hippo. <laughs> uh, hey, Huli. It's all right. Late is late is better than never. Who in who always enjoys poor help? Hey, William, glad you can make it. Cookie loving monsters. <laughs> who always enjoys poor help? Who always enjoys poor help? My my brain goes logical. My brain says it's a doctor, <laughs> but that doesn't quite that doesn't quite match for uh, for a riddle. Oh, well, the hippo thinks doctor also. Is it that sort of logic? Well, maybe it's not that logical. Who enjoys poor health? The way it's worded makes you think something else. Oh, Lori James also thinks doctors. Who says a bartender who always enjoys poor health? <laughs> All right, let's see what the answer is. Answer is a doctor. All right, who was the first one? Velvet Hippo was the first one. Good job, Velvet Hippo. <laughs> Mortuary. <laughs> Hospitals, yes. Yes. Other than it says who, we're looking we were looking for a person. <laughs> so uh mortician would be the answer for William. 
<laughs> Why couldn't Goldilocks sleep? Why couldn't Goldilocks sleep? All right, I'm, I'm rusty on my nursery rhymes. Is Goldilocks the, the three bears and the bed that's just right? Poor help. <laughs> okay, it's all good, Uli. It's all good. Why couldn't Goldilocks sleep? It was daytime. Okay, this is the this is the lateral thinking I'm looking for, Lord James. Even if it's not the right answer, that's a good answer. Why couldn't Goldilocks sleep? You know, that actually might be the answer. Ate too much porridge. I guess it's not three bears. It's three... Oh, yeah, three bears. Each had different beds. I don't know. I'm, I'm rusty on my nursery rhymes. Hey, Sakar, glad you could make it. Too much coffee. <laughs> All right, let's see what the answer is. Because of night bears. Oh, goodness. Goldilocks couldn't sleep because of night bears. All right, that, that's... All right, that's, that's awful. <laughs> what do you call it when your parachute doesn't open? What do you call it when your parachute doesn't open? What do you call it when your parachute doesn't open? I, I bet it's some type of pun. You're at the end of your rope. Something about cord. What do you call it when your parachute doesn't open? You're at the end of your rope. Or some type of pun with cord. Splat is correct, William. What do you call it when your parachute doesn't open? <laughs> I can't say that putting money in the swear jar. <laughs> Parathud. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what do you call it when your parachute doesn't open? <laughs> See what the answer is. Jumping to a conclusion. Wow. See, I knew I was thinking it was going to be some type of phrase. What do you call it when your parachute doesn't open? It's called jumping to a conclusion. All right. That's not bad. That's not bad. Failure to communicate. <laughs> All right. What's the best thing to put into pies? Mm. And again, we're doing what's considered our kids' riddles. So these may be easier. Maybe they be kind of puns or use expressions. <laughs> what is the best thing to put into pies? I'm wondering if, uh, I'm looking at the word pies and I'm wondering if there's something in there. What is the best thing to put into pies? Thumbs? Oh, is, is that a nursery rhyme, something? Finger, forks. Okay, I see where you're going with that. Mm-hmm. What is the best thing to put into pies? Your teeth. All right. <laughs> you guys were on the right track. I'm going to give a cookie for Lori James. William gets a cookie. And Jimmy Slomo. They're all on the right track. On the right track is close enough for me. Close enough, like horseshoes and hand grenades. Are we going to use expressions? What is the longest word in the dictionary? All right, 
Like this has a very riddle vibe to it. Is it, what is the longest word is the longest word? What is the longest word in the dictionary? This is a kid's riddle. So it's not, we're not looking for the, the logical whatever 37 letter word or whatever is the actual longest one. This is a riddle. <laughs> it's all good, William. What is the longest word in the dictionary? Super Forever. I like that. Infinity, longest tradition. Wow, we got a lot of a lot of things. Hey, Susie Fenhaven, glad you can make it. Smiles. Oh, all right, all right. Forever, infinite, infinity. I What is the longest word? I'm, so no one's thinking, okay, there's, William thinks longest. What is the longest word is the longest? Let's see what the answer is. Smiles. There is a mile between the two S's. Holy cow, Skylark. <laughs> Smiles, because there is a mile between the two S's. All right. Good job, Skylark. I don't think I would have ever come up with that one. How was the robot gorilla fixed? The longest form of word is wording, right? Wording, uh, it could be, there could be a, a prefix or an annex onto that, uh, Susie. I don't know if wordings can you can you even like make a plural, so there there might be a longer word for it. You heard that one in distant past. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, these are kid riddles. It's a good job remembering it, Skylark. How was the robot gorilla fixed? How was the robot gorilla fixed? I'm thinking it's like a pun on repair or <laughs> Jimmy slow mo. Oh goodness. Oh, monkey wrench. Right, right, right. <laughs> I like Jimmy slow mo's and Hooli's answers better. But I have a feeling monkey wrench is the correct one. Yeah, it's monkey wrench. <laughs> I'm getting a cookie for Jimmy. Cookie for Huli. <laughs> for the creativity. And for the correct one, which was done by Velvet Hippo. <laughs> uh, oh, they, uh, Velvet Hippo just beat you out, Skylark. You got the right answer, you just weren't the first one. What do you get if you cross a hen with a guitar? What do you get if you cross a hen with a guitar. A stringy chicken? What do you get if you cross a hen with a guitar? <laughs> Why did the chicken cross a cord? No. I'm trying to think of different words related to chickens, hens, related to guitars. Plucks, there we go. Music when you pluck them, there you go. Strumsticks, Jimmy Hendrix. William. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great, William. <laughs> what do you get if you cross a hen with a guitar? Jimi Hendrix. Let's see what the answer is. A chicken that plucks itself. All right, first of all, William gets a cookie for just a good answer. 
And the one who, the self-plucking chicken, who had it first? Plucked Velvet Hippo. <laughs> and self-plucking chickens. All right, I'll give a cookie to Scar. I'm feeling, I'm very generous with the cookies today. I'm feeling generous. Everybody wants these emoji cookies. All right, what's next? Okay, looks like I need to zoom out. Okay, got to zoom out some more. Open me and you can't see me without a mirror. Close me and you can't see me at all. What am I? Open me and you can't see me without a mirror. Close me and you can't see me at all. What am I? Oh, eyes, mouth, eyes. You can't see me without a mirror. Close me and you can't see me. Okay, eyes, 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 eyes. Good job. Who got it first? Silver Fox. Silver Fox gets a cookie. Open me your eyes and you can't see me without a mirror. Close me. Close your eyes and you can't see me at all. Okay. All right, we're moving out away from the kid riddles. <laughs> All right, we're going to the difficult riddles now. I still have three riddle unlock keys. RiddleWatt is a website where they have a front page riddle and I don't have access to the answer of any of these riddles. I do, however, have uh, three riddle unlock keys, which I thought I was going to end up using last time, but I never ended up using. <laughs> My goodness. <clears throat> so we're going to start here on the front page riddle. Uh, if someone solves the front page riddle, they then have the option of putting their own riddle on the front page. And this is how they, this website incentivizes people to submit riddles. And there's, you know, like thousands of riddles in the database that you can look at. Too, too small now? That's about the best I can do, I think. All right, so we're looking for a nine-letter word. And I do have riddle unlock keys that I'm willing to use if we can't figure out the riddle. So I can put in guesses, and we'll see if that works. If it doesn't work, I'll, I'll start using my riddle unlock keys. Uh, our name is a building where you get power. We play the same notes for what seems like an hour. Back in the day, people said, what the heck, yo? But now we are highly regarded in tech, no? Okay, we're looking for a nine letter, probably one word. Our name is a building where you get power. We play the same notes for what seems like an hour. Back in the day, people said, what the heck, yo? But now we are highly regarded in tech, no? Our name is a building where you get power. We play the same notes for what seems like an hour. Back in the day, people said, what the heck, yo? But now we are highly regarded in tech, no? Hmm. So it's a building where you get power. We play the same notes for what seems like an hour. Sounds like a band. Back in the day, people said, what the heck, yo? Highly regarded in tech. Techno is a type of um, music, techno music. Build the Hippo says computers. C O M P U T E R S. Computers is not the right answer. I'm going to just quickly look at some of the incorrect guesses. Oh, wow. Lots of them. Bell Tower, Cathedral. Our name is a building where you get power. 
So let me start with that. We've got like windmills. Oh no, it's a, it's a single building. Windmills, not enough letters. Solar cell. We play the same notes for what seem like seems like an hour. Back in the day, people said, what the heck, yo, but now we are highly regarded in tech, no? Power plant. Our name is a building where you get power. Well, then it could be government, a government building. Lori James says Tower of Power. White House, this is not, not enough. Our name is a building where you get power. We play the same notes for what seems like an hour. Back in the day, people said, what the heck, yo, but now we are highly regarded in techno. What's that uh, dance, EDM, electronic dance music? Tower of power. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Except that's 10, ten letters, Lori. Tower or too many letters. Miss the N in government. Okay. Then it doesn't it doesn't fit then. Metallica. That's the right number of letters. Mm, nope, it's not Metallica. Our name is a building where you get power. So you think it's a name of a band? Mm. All right, I'm going to work on the help. Let's go see if I can get the first answer, the first letter of the answer. Come on. Maybe I need to empty this out. Give me a hint. I'll refresh. Help. Buy. 50 coins, yes. All right, first letter is a K. First letter is a K. K. One, two, three, four. Don't listen to me. Hey, I listen to everybody. All right, well, now I'm, I'm thinking with a K, like uh, kilowatt or kilowatts. Okay, AZ, Evan Penn is thinking the same thing. Is, is that how you spell it? Is it two L's, two T's? Craft work. Okay, it's the right number of letters. Now I get to play along for real. All right, did I misspell it? Is it? Kilowatt building. Our name is a building where you get power. One L. Okay. Then I need the S. Kilowatts. No. I'm gonna look at the wrong the wrong answers again. Whoops. These are all the wrong answers is what's listed here. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and put in maybe it's the name of a band with that goes with two L's. Craftwork makes sense. All right, I'll, I'll put in Craftwork next. K R A F T W E R K, and there's no more letters. No more letters. Oh, Craftwork. Hmm. Okay, you're gonna make me look at. 
K-R-A-F-T-W-E-R-K. Kraftwerk is a band, a German band formed in Dusseldorf, innovators and pioneers of electronic music. They're among the first to popularize the genre. Okay. The mch, 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 mch. Yeah, I, I'm not familiar. It was formed in 1970. The band Kraftwerk out of Germany. I, I'm not fam I'm familiar with them. So what, wait a minute. So was the name... Is the name Kraftwerk a a building where you get power? Oh, Kraftwerk. Kraftwerk popcorn. It keeps bringing up the band, but I want to know about the word. All right. Let me go up to dictionary. K-R-A-F-T-W-E-R-K. Okay, maybe it's German. <laughs> no definitions found. Don't even know a Kraftwerk sing single. Well, this is YouTube, so I can't play music unless it's approved by YouTube. Otherwise, I would start playing Kraftwerk. Sounds like baking cheese. <laughs> All right, we're going to do another riddle, another riddle what riddle. I only had to use a hint. You guys figured it out without eating. All right. All right. It's eight letters. Freezing music takes part in games. Freezing music takes part in games. Okay, I think I've got this one. <laughs> but I'm going to wait to see if you, you've got it. Eight letters. It goes like... To, okay, thanks, give me... I appreciate it, give me truth. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, there's just a lot of bands, and a, a band that is actually older than me. Kind of hard to realize that. It's I do appreciate it, give me truth. Boom, Silver Fox. I think Silver Fox got a cold play. Freezing music takes part in games. Cold play, right? This is a more recent more recent band. Yeah, okay. Who got it first? It was Silver Fox. All right, cookie for Silver Fox. Oh, I didn't give a cookie for whoever got the who got craft work. I'm still thrown by the answer. Craftwork. Evelyn Curry. Curry. I didn't mean it. Evelyn Curry. Looks like Evelyn Curry. Evelyn Curry gets a cookie. There we go. What is Coldplay? It's a slow rock band that's on pop music radio. Slow rock is the best description I can give you for Coldplay. <laughs> it was all yellow. It's Tony. It's, he knows... Alan Kay knows his cold play. All right, let's look. At, let's do another hard riddle. I didn't need to, again. You guys are too good. I haven't had to use my my uh, riddle unlock keys. You have a real slow internet, but you got the right answer, Evelyn. Good job. Another eight-letter word, probably one one word. A helpful trick to unlock a memory. A helpful trick. To unlock a memory. Eight letters. A helpful trick to unlock a memory. A helpful trick to unlock a memory. Reminder, mnemonic, hypnosis. Oh, man. Let me do them in order. Reminder is the right number of letters. Okay, it's not reminder. Mnemonic, M-N-E-M-O-N-I-C. Alan K. Good job. A helpful trick to unlock mnemonic 
you try to when you're trying to like remember a list of things you use like the first letter to every good boy deserves fudge if you're a musician i guess good job alan k i got to remember to give out the cookies here <laughs> it's supposed to be bands. <laughs> Just the first two apparently had to be bands. Oh, is this also a band called Mnemonic? Yeah, Alan K's got his milk going. <laughs> is there a band called Mnemonic? All right, we're going to work on another Riddle Watt difficult riddle. Three letters. It's only got three letters. I'm pretty sure it's going to be one word then. Where may you find roads without cars, forests without trees, Cities without houses. Where may you find roads without cars, forests without trees, cities without houses, and you only got three letters. Oh, map. Evan Penn got it. Roads without cars, forests without cities without houses. All right. All right. Good job, Evan Penn. Get out the cookie before I forget. Map, 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 map. Evan Penn was first. Good job, everybody. All right, what else we got? What you say at the startling moment when you realize your motorcycle is a sweet potato. Six letters. What you say at the startling moment when you realize your motorcycle is a sweet potato. I have this feeling that yam is involved somehow. Oh, I think I got it. Oh, we've had this one before? Oh, that's probably why I've real. I, I think I got it. All right. This is an old one. Oh, meaning we've done it before? Well, yeah, maha. Okay. All right. Well, if we've had this one, we've done it, but I can't remember. Who was the first one that got it? Huli got, was the first one. All right. There is a cookie for Huli. Yamaha. Yamaha. That's probably why I recognize it right away, because we've done it before. All right. We're going to work. We're going to change gears. We're going to do some rebuses. What's a rebus? Well, we've been doing bottle cap puzzles the past couple weeks, and they're very similar to rebuses. Uh, here are four examples. Let me zoom in a little bit more. Stale cookie from last week. <laughs> Huli only wants the freshest emoji cookies. <laughs> so that this one at the upper upper left here, uh, the answer is three blind mice because it has no eyes. So three blind mice. The second one here is overall. The, I'm just giving you some examples of rebuses. This third one is to swear black is white. I, I'm not familiar with that expression. To swear black is white. And this last one is reduction. And you can get that. It's a You've got U-C-T-I-O-N and then it's in red. So it's a reduction. So these are rebuses. Now let's see if we can figure them out. I'm going to put up four at the same time. So you can go ahead and guess at any of them. All right, these two bottom ones I've got right away. But I'll get my cookie ready. Is it music to my ears for that for that one? Yeah, Man Overboard, I'm pretty sure that one. Music to my east, hitting below the belt, I'm pretty sure that's one. Music to my ears. I, I don't, I see music to ears, but I don't quite see music to my ears. Hitting below the belt. I'm pretty sure that one in Man Overboard, I've got, I'm pretty sure it's right. Skylark for Man Overboard, hitting below the belt 
for Evan Penn. I've been recently thinking about all the wasted abilities of these smart people. What was that all about? What's the... All the wasted abilities of these smart people. I don't know what you mean, wasted. I actually think this is kind of like um, exercise for mental exercise. Music to hitting below the belt, my ears. Pick man. Throw mate equals pick. Hmm. So you, you're thinking music to my ears, hitting below the belt. Don't know. Hey, we're here having fun, Czar. You don't have to stick around. Man overboard, I'm not sure what F-P-H-R-O-M-A-T is. Mixed metaphor for roommate. Mixed metaphor. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, man overboard. It's a mixed metaphor. All right, I'll look at the answers. Mixed metaphor. Oh, I see. It's uh. Oh, it's like an anagram. <laughs> All right, that's good. Music to one's ears. Okay, the only two I didn't give cookies out was for music to my ears. Skylark got that one. And mixed metaphor. Mixed metaphor for sassy. Oh, music to one's ears. Okay, yeah, that makes so two ones. T W O ones. Music to one's ears. All right, yeah, that makes more sense. The music to my ears, because I couldn't get that one. It was very close though. Alright, let's work on the next one. Here's the next four. Alright, that one looks easy. The upper left looks easy. I think I've got the bottom left one. Oh, you don't get mixed metaphor? I'll, I'll come back to it, Lori James. Or, or I'll tell you, Lori James, if you scramble the, letter, the letters up in metaphor, you can spell the word fromate with those letters, the, the word metaphor. So you, so the expression mixed metaphor comes from the word fromate, which is a mixed up of the word of, of metaphor. Crossroads all over again. I'm pretty sure those are correct. You don't even see them yet, Sassy. Yeah, you might have to refresh the stream, Sassy. So mixed metaphor is, is the, like an anagram of metaphor is fromate, if, if that's even a real word. Between all the houses. I haven't heard that expression before. It does it does work for the rebus, but I can't figure that out on uh, how that works. All around the house, all around the houses, all around the houses. That works too. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. Hey, Czar, we're trying to get better at armchair treasure hunts. And this is the one of the ways to do it for me. 
Treasure hunts are just puzzles. Whether it's the forest fen treasure hunt, it's just a puzzle. I have to try to figure it out. This is one of the ways I think our brains can get trained to think differently. Uh, you don't have to agree. Gold above it. Okay, gold. Somehow you got gold from A R O A U gold. Gold above it. You are an arms above it. You are, you are within the word arms. Gold rises above it. Okay. I'm going to give out cookies once I once I see the answers. All right. Crossroads all around the hoses, all over it. You are up in arms over it. You are up in arms over it. You are up in arms. All right, you, you guys were very close on that one. It is Latin for gold. Oh, Latin for gold. You are up in arms over it. So, okay, Sonny, Sonny got it later on. All right, let me go through these again. Let me get for Sonny, who's, who's the second one. Good job, Sonny. The one who was closest was Evan Penn for that for that one. Cookie for Evan Penn. A U R U M is Latin for gold. Okay, okay, sassy. Uh, whoever had crossroads first, Skylark got crossroads all around the houses. All around the houses. Skylark and Silver Fox get cookies. The only one left all over again. Who had all over again? Also Skylark. All right, Skylark, we get another one. All right, we're going to go to the next. Here are the next Rebuses. And let me give another cookie for... Skylark. These are our next four rebuses. Mm. Well, I'm not getting any any of these right away. It's all good, Sassy. It's all good. No good TV, zero good on TV. Nothing good on TV. Oh, fire engine. Red E for anything. Nice, Sunny. <laughs> red E for anything. For ready, red E for anything I, I love that that's great sunny i'm giving the cookie for the sunny right now there's a cookie for sunny <laughs> yeah nothing good on tv a cookie for skylark and Huli were closest and first Nothing good on TV. So somebody thinks this is Fire Engine. And boot on the other foot. Oh, isn't there something like an expression? Boot on the wrong foot. Boot on the right foot. I'm having a hard time. 
It is boot on the other foot. Is that an expression? Fire engine, fire engine. Ah. Boots on the other foot. Is that, that must be an expression, I guess. The boot is another. Oh, is that like putting yourself in someone else's shoes? <laughs> boots on the ground. <laughs> Oh, you forced fenders, you're all focused on that. Anything that's related. Shoe on the wrong foot or um, about foot. Okay. All right, let me take care of, I'm pretty sure a fire engine is fire engine. Velvet Hippo, I'll give it to you, Velvet Hippo. Let me look at the answers first. Fire engine, nothing going to, put the boot on the other foot. Okay. And put a cookie for Velvet Hippo. And boot on the other foot. Okay. Boot on the other foot. Boot on the other foot. Who had Silver Fox got it? All right. Silver Fox. There we go. All right. Next Rebuses. We got time to do another four. Uh, hopefully you can all see that. <clears throat> hmm. I'm not getting these right away. You don't see them yet, Sassy? Yeah, you might want to refresh the refresh the stream. Over Hill and Dale. Oh, breakfast. Nice. Iron curtain. Nice, Sakar. Oh, you just beat Davio. <laughs> over hill and under dale up the dale and over the hill hmm up the dale and over the hill or down the dale and over the hill what about the lower right one? I don't think anybody has guessed our backwards overs yet. Flipped over and over again. Okay. Let me see what the answers are. Over hill and down dale. I'm, I'm not familiar with that expression. Breakfast. Leftovers. Oh, you read them from the left. Leftovers. Oh, man. All right. Let's see how we can do. Uh, let's see. All right. Looks like Hooli was the closest with the Overhill and Dale at Hooli breakfast was Velvet Hippo just beat you Bonnie Velvet Hippo got breakfast just before Bonnie Iron Curtain somebody got that Sakar make sure no one else before Sakar got Iron Curtain Sakar for Iron Curtain and nobody got leftovers. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, we'll do another four rebuses. Okay. Do another 
another four. <laughs> Velvet Hippo will share his cookies. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got here. All right, I think I've got one of them. All right, I'm sorry, Sassy. <laughs> Yeah, I think Big Brother. Yeah, Big Brother is the lower left one. I'm going to even go ahead and give a cookie to Evan, who's the first one that got that. Flat Tire. Skylark just before Sakar and Huli. Six other ones. Hmm. Scarlet thinks the upper left one is nothing to it. One is always before the other. Hmm. Nothing for nothing. So that's the other, that's the top left. I'm pretty sure flat tires. I'm going to give a cookie for Skylark for flat tire. Oh, six of one and six of the other? Eyes on another. I think they're ones, though. These, are, these look like number ones, Evelyn. One another. One's cornered by others? Hmm. Half dozens. It's all good, Skylark. Six of one, half dozen of the other. <laughs> Everybody says it. <laughs> says it at the same time. <laughs> Six of ones and half dozens of the of others. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, let's see what we got. The only one who had the guess for the upper left hand. Oh, nothing for nothing. I thought someone else had a, had a guess for that upper left hand one. Next to nothing. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. Okay. Did somebody have next to nothing? I, I thought I read somebody said that. Next to nothing. Nothing for nothing is the only thing. Next to nothing. No one had that? I, I thought someone had that. Next to, next to the number two, nothing. I guess nobody got that one. Flat tire. And Big Brother, I gave out cookies already. Six of one, half dozen the other. Who was the first one to get that? Half dozen the other. Velvet Hippo. Velvet Hippo was the first one to get six of one, half dozen the other. Velvet Hippo. All right, we're going to change gears a little bit. You had nothing to it. I was wrong. Nothing for nothing. It's all good, everyone. Changing gears. So, The Art of Hidden Messages released a treasure hunt. Girl Scout Troop is at my door. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let me minimize that like this. Treasure hunt was released on Sunday. It was a free treasure hunt released by The Art of Hidden Messages. Uh, if you email the art of hidden messages at gmail.com, you can register and then you can still, even today, I'm pretty sure you can still get this PDF for the treasure hunt. What we're looking for are a question and an answer. The question 
is somehow hidden in this image and we need not only the question but we need an answer uh, some people have been throwing out some guesses if you go to mysterioushwritings.com there is a section in the forum for the art of hidden messages i solved one of the hints but it's as far as i got okay sassy oh good. thin mints cookies girl scott trip at my door <laughs> i got you <laughs> um i'm i worked on this yesterday i had a helper who's also helping me with this treasure hunt but you know i i think i figured out maybe some things but i don't know if i'm if i'm on the right path or not so i'm here to share hey genetic blend is here the art of hidden messages okay she says you can still email so the art of hidden messages at gmail.com you can still join this treasure hunt I remember when the Art Hidden Messages released a booklet and those those were solved very quickly and I kind of expected that for this treasure hunt it was going to get solved like the same day all um, the treasure hunt you just have to figure out the question the answer and then you send it to the Art of Hidden Messages and you can uh, once you figure it out all you have to do is then email the question email the answer and you can get the prize the prize is something that has a value of between 25 and 50 dollars and um it we don't know what it, the object is because it, it was mentioned that it's related to the treasure hunt itself pool party all right <clears throat> Sassy says it involves a mirror and a substitution cipher. Okay. Uh, I will say that the letters in the upper right-hand corner have been bugging me because I've been trying to figure out. I did use a mirror, or I, my the, the one who was helping me used a mirror to figure it out. Level 42? Oh, too quickly. Yeah, that was for the, for the previous The Art of Hidden Messages. Yeah, I, I know um, genetic blend that to, it's got to be a big issue in publishing a book and then printing it. And um, to do that and then to have it solved so quickly, it's got to be you know a little bit frustrating. Because I know it's a, it must be a lot of work to put out a treasure hunt where you actually make a book and you publish it. And you know you had to email them out to everybody. Uh, but this, this was one that uh, The Art of Hidden Messages just released yesterday morning and no one has solved it uh, it was just posted a little while ago that 63 people have signed up for it there's no cost and the treasure is between 25 and 50 dollars uh, an object looks like a lightning bug all right well one of the things I found and some other people found it this is called a click beetle it can be found in different parts of the United States uh, the main thing is these large dots on the front it they look like eyes but they're not the eyes but predators will see that and apparently predators look at something and that will tell them by the size of the eyes they'll determine whether something is either uh, food or maybe it's a predator and so this is one of the things that they've developed in order to make them look bigger is that if they have these large eye spots it makes people makes potential predators think that they're bigger than they actually are it's a beetle that bores into trees. Okay, yeah, click beetle. Skylark says, I played with the image in Photoshop and made copies in different styles. Mirrored, negative. Yep. Uh, so to get, that was the, the click beetle. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, could be a metaphor for something. It is very prominent in this image, so it's, it's got to have some, some meaning. Uh, the text in the upper right corner that, that we keep talking about, if you flip it upside down and mirror it you can kind of read it uh, but i've been having some difficulty trying to take the letters out it and uh, sassy says you got to use a mirror and a substitution cipher uh, i haven't even been able to completely be confident in what the letters are themselves before even using um using a cipher or some type of translator Sassy says there's a map on there too. That's interesting. <laughs> there's a map in there somewhere. Oh. All right, I'm going to go through some various things. 
So I did a reverse image search. Uh, th this is a, a lighthouse. And I, I know I'm not the only one that has done this, but I was able to find, find where the image was taken from. This is a lighthouse in Denmark. It's called L-Y-N-G-V-I-G, Lingvig Lighthouse. F-Y-R is lighthouse in Danish, Braven in the wood. So the, apparently using the reverse image, I was able to find the original image for the lighthouse. Um, it was mostly copy and pasted. The text on the outside is all different. And the one major difference is at the top. In the original image, it's a straight vertical line. Here in the treasure hunt, uh, there's been a horizontal line and um, like a trident that was added to the top. Uh, Montauk is another lighthouse, and Montauk... Um, it, it is similar. And there was some connection I made to Mont. There was some connection. I'm not sure if I remember correctly, but I'll. I'll that's what I thought. Denmark, yes. Uh, on mysterious writing, some people talk about Norway. I, I thought the the image that was originally taken was from Denmark, so another Scandinavian country. But the original image has just a vertical spire at the top. Uh, the image itself is pretty much copy pasted, except that a horizontal line and sort of the trident three-pronged spear was added at the top. Yes, a sign for Neptune. That's that's a, a possibility. Um, but I'm not... It's got to have some meaning. I don't know what it is yet. These are just things I'm... I have not figured out this treasure and I'm trying to give up some ideas. Poseidon? Mm-hmm. So the, the lighthouse in Denmark... The lighthouse in Denmark was built in 1906. So I don't know if this is part of the question that is hidden by this piece of note paper, but there's 1905. And the negative 48, 96, and 50, I, I don't know what those mean. They've got to be important, but I don't know what they mean. So all the text that you see in the, in the, in the treasure hunt here all the text on the left, the numbers and the symbols on the right, these were added later. All of the little leader lines are also all new. Uh, January 1796 plan. I, I ended up looking for uh, lighthouses that were built in 1796. Uh, I found one in Lithuania, K-L-A-I-P-E-D-A, Klaipeda, lighthouse in Lithuania, it, which is sort of similar. Sassy says 1905 has significance too. Um, one of my ideas for 1905 is we're looking for a question, and this is kind of looks like the question is hidden behind this paper. And maybe the end of the question is 1905. So I'm, I'm wondering, we've got this little, we've got this little like there's a, a letter, and you can, maybe there's a, a vertical line as a part of a letter that's hidden behind here. So I'm wondering if the question is um, built, like this is kind of looks like a lowercase t, the the little foot, let's say, of the t. So maybe there's the word built 1905, which is why I was looking at years that the different lighthouses were built. Uh, another idea is that is like maybe the, there's a word that's hidden called year. And the reason I say year is because I think this, this kind of looks like an r, where you've got kind of one of the feet of an R. BC, 1905. Okay. I can see that Skylark. It could be a C. Where we're seeing just the piece of it. You know, without working on the codes or the substitution, Montauk Point was designed in 1796. Okay. So maybe the image was taken, but from that lighthouse in Denmark, but it was just used as an image and the actual information in the image is not important. The important was the stuff that was added later on. Montauk was, that's the map in the hole. That's the map in the hole. Well, right here. Wow. 
Wow, that would be rough. Unless I'm looking at the wrong thing you're asking about. 71096, too old. I, I remember looking up Montauk and I didn't write down in the year that it was built. I do remember it was an older lighthouse, but I don't remember of 1796. Is this the Marconi radio tower? No, that, this this image was definitely taken from the lighthouse in Denmark called L Y N L Y N G V I G Lingvig Lighthouse, where F Y R is Danish for lighthouse. But the image might have been just taken as just some an image just to take to start off with. Blow up the hole under the beetle, okay? We are talking about this one right here. There's a map of a coastline in the hole. Wow, okay. Oh, unless you mean like the torn page. All right, to me, and this is something I, I thought was I could see right away, but maybe I'm missing something. This looks like a spiral notebook page that's been torn, where these are the torn parts in the spiral. Don't I have a spiral one not nearby? And these holes are the holes of the three ring binder hole. You know, I've, I've got one nearby. Let's see. So it looks like a spiral notebook page. Let me see. Let me see. I don't know if you guys can see that. So you got the perforated holes in the edge, and you got the one, two, three for the three ring binder. To me, that's what that looks like. So you've got one of the three ring binder holes here, one here, and then this is part of the spiral. It is torn, edge of the paper is somewhat suspect. In the hole found a peninsula, okay. The map of the coastline in a hole, okay. So to me this looks like it's a, a torn paper where you've got some of the spiral and it's torn here on the, the edge too. There could be some importance to that. I, I don't know. Um, one of the things that the Art of Hidden Messages says riveted was misspelled. I thought that might have been important. <laughs> Apparently that was an oops. Riveted should be R-I-V-E-T-E-D. -E -E the edge south of the click beetle. Somewhat suspect. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's hiding some letters. We're looking for a question that's hidden in this. And this has a question mark at the end. And it's kind of these numbers, the 48, 96, 50, kind of looks like it's a math problem. How do we form a question out of these pieces? Well, I'm not sure, Sonny. <laughs> I believe there's some, definitely some information in this text, which you have to go upside down and reverse it to even read it. And even then, I'm not 100% sure of the letters. Something I noticed is that the groups of letters on the left-hand side you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And of the numbers and symbols, you have seven of those too. You got the nine, the five, the little symbol, one, five, eight, and the half circle. Spiral bound, spiral staircase. I didn't make that connection, Sassy. You're correct. All right. Um, but we have seven groups of letters and seven numbers and symbols on the right-hand side. I'm wondering if there's some connection. Even though they don't line up, there might be some connection of the one side of the lighthouse to the other side of the obvious. The question will be obvious if you're solving the puzzle correctly, okay? Ninth letter, fifth letter. Yes, okay, so what, are, what could the numbers and symbols on the right-hand side represent? Uh, I started with letters where the ninth letter of the alphabet, the fifth letter of the alphabet, you know, the fifth, the first, I couldn't get that to work. Um, 
one who I'm working with thinks these might be atomic numbers, you know, shout out to Davio and his elemental table. The elemental table also has atomic numbers. So if you needed to convert some numbers into letters, maybe that's what it is. Uh, another thing I had, this comes back to my uh, lateral thinking stuff. You know, a nine kind of looks like an upside down B. A five looks like an S. The double bar, what do I call that? Two barred cross. Kind of looks like a T, a one looks like an I, five looks like an S, and eight looks like a B. And this symbol, which looks like a half circle, could be a C, could be a U. How many stairs are in a spiral staircase? I, I will say, doing the research on the different lighthouses, they seem to all have a date that it was built and the number of stairs in the staircase. That seems to be something that everybody wants to know. So that's definitely possible for the, for the question, Evan Penn. A letter out of each of the nine things on the left. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like the ninth letter. Well, the only thing is, so W-I-N-D-S-W, if it's the ninth letter, we've only got seven letters. So I, I like the thinking, Skylark. Seven level word. All right, uh, let's see. So the the symbol, and here we go to Susie Fenhaven, the symbol. So the double, double barred cross. Uh, it's used in literature as a footnote. So usually footnotes have a little asterisk. If they have a second footnote on the same page, it'll have a cross. And if they have a third footnote on the same page, they do this double cross. You can find this two barred cross in different places. It's, it symbolizes different things. Uh, I haven't been able to figure out what it is. Uh, it also has the symbol of iron. This is something um, when I was working with found out that it has a symbol of iron, and you've got iron riveted wall. You know, it's not numbered lined up, but it's very close physically in the thing. There are seven si spirals in the notebook page. Okay. The shadowy image that is blurred out in the whole page. Yeah, the when we're get when you start looking at symbols, you, you start seeing that this symbol could mean something. It's not very clear, but th there could be a possibility. Adrian, it does. It also does not equal. It also does not equal. Okay. Davio with iron 26. Do we have a 26 in there somewhere? I don't see one. Uh, so the double dagger or the two-barred cross has different meanings. And I, I'm not sure what this half circle could be. So the lighthouse in Denmark, trident, horizontal line at the top. Oh, there could be some metaphors. Uh, somebody said Nautilus or uh, Poseidon and Neptune. What is the, why was the three pointed spear added to the top? Oh, not equal sign. I see what you're saying. Does not equal. Right. If you rotate it, can I, can I rotate this bad boy? Mm -mm. Here we go. No, it was right. The, it was right the way it was before. <laughs> so does not equal. I, I I got you. Huli sees moons. I, I I was thinking that too initially. Like these are like the different phases of the moon, but the more I look at it, it looks like the torn part of a spiral bound notebook. But I I see where you're going with this like lunar. Lunar cycle, you know, particularly when I was doing masquerade and the whole sp spring equinox and everything. You're, you're thinking like moon phases and things. Yeah, this is this is a lot of fun. I, I don't I don't have the answer, but these are some ideas I had. And you go to mysterious writings in the forums, in the art of hidden messages. Some people have shared some ideas here too. I, I don't mind sharing ideas. 
Uh, I know in forced fin, some people have some issues with, you know, they might share some things, but other things. But you know, this is all about having fun. Yes, there's a there's a prize involved, but this is this is all fun. We're we're all about trying to solve puzzles. We're all about trying to solve these treasure hunts and have some fun doing it. And I think this is just fun, even just talking about it. Uh, so some metaphors. So it, um, the cross could have some religious importance. Uh, the beetle has a as a representation of rebirth. Uh, a lighthouse itself, it has a metaphor as a lighthouse is sort of to help ships. It's kind of as a guide or a help in some other way. So maybe these are there's some metaphors for these different symbols that we have, and that will help us get at the question. Lighthouses matter at night. Mm -hmm. Question: Where am I? You are here. Oh, you think that's or you think that's the question for that we're supposed to look for for the treasure hunt? First wireless telegraph was sent in 1901. Okay, across the Atlantic. All right. So yeah, January 1796 plan in the lower left. Uh, that that number does not match for the one in in Denmark, but this this image could have been just taken just as a, a starting point. A Beatles song, okay. There you go, genetic blend. It's a free hunt. Have fun. <laughs> so we have a trident, weather vane pointing southwest. A click beetle, some math, some gibberish. No idea. <laughs> Southwest winds to South Neptune Island in Australia. Okay. Wind SW. You think it's wind southwest. Lantern, cylindrical walls. There could be something in these words that there's a code or some information here. I did play around with these words to see if there was something. I haven't been able to figure it out, but it doesn't mean there isn't something in there. 1905 has a significance for lighthouses. In general, okay, I'll have to look that up. Maybe it went from gas to electric or something. I'll, ha I'll have to research that, Sassy. Beetle, skipjack, boat. <laughs> oh, skipjack. So you think if it's a skipjack, then there's some type of skip cipher to the, to the or a code that you have to skip every, every once in a while. That's interesting. All right, well, that's, that's enough on the treasure hunt. Let's get back to puzzles and riddles. Related to stairs, the spiral notebook, spiral stairs, very possible. All right, we're going to go to so some word associations. Again, armchair treasure hunts, we're trying to work on lateral thinking, trying to work on our vocabulary, too. This is kind of related to vocabulary. So in each of these puzzles, you're given three words. So for example, if you're given the words volley, field, and bearing, what word would you then associate that with these three words? And the word you'd get is ball, because you have volleyball, ball field, and ball bearing. So we're going to be given three words. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome, Genetic Plan. I'm glad. I have fun with these things. That's all we're doing, having fun. Here I am in a motel in Houston, Texas, thousands of miles from home. I'm ha I'm ha this is my fun time. <laughs> Where, when did a boat sink? Okay. Oh, so when did a boat sink and then a lighthouse got put later on? I like that idea, Huli. There, there were some things when I was researching lighthouses that they would have a tragedy and then that would be the incentive for that area to then install a lighthouse in that spot. Yeah, great idea to practice. Yeah, so here we're now we're back to practice. So we're going to have given three sets of words, three words, and we're looking for one word that associates on them. So for the example, when you've got the words volley, field, and bearing, the word associated with ball, because you've got volleyball, ball field and ball bearing so let's let's get started here this one as you can see it's purple i looked up the answer for this one so we got three words back short and watch this one i looked up so i can't i can't help you <laughs> thanks for stopping by mo
Yeah, with no uh, no Calazars today, so I'm your secondary lesser live stream for today. Calazars will be back a week from today. Calazars and Cape Pro on August 12th, mo Monday. Here we go. Stop, 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 stop. Backstop, short stop, and stopwatch. All right, who got the first one? Huli got the first one. Good job. So this, is, we're, we're, this is a vocabulary part. This is kind of a vocabulary thing. Blue, cake, and cottage. Blue, cake, and cottage. Oh, okay, I got it now. I you, you, you guys will probably get it too. I'll get my cookie ready. <clears throat> Blue cake and cottage. Yeah, Sonny's got it. Cheese. Good job. You listen for three clicks in Morse code to receive the translation. Oh, interesting, Evan Penn. Stool, powder, and ball. Stool, powder, and ball. What word can we associate all three words? Hmm. I don't know this one so far. Stool, powder, and ball. <laughs> you want a cookie, Brad? You got to earn it. <laughs> foot. Foot powder, footstool, football. <laughs> Loose. Oh, my. I think foot is the right answer, but let me make sure. Oh, goodness. Yeah, footstool, foot powder, football. Okay. Sonny got that one, too. I'm going to bring up the next one. Big soil and table. Cookie for Sonny. <clears throat> Big soil and table. Big soil and table. I only get the really hard ones. Top. Big top. Top soil and tabletop. Nice. Velvet Hippo. Good job. Good job, Velvet Hippo. All right, next one. Made, cuff, and left. Made, cuff and left. What word can be associated with all three of those words? Made, cuff, and left. I see off, I see hand. Uh, I think hand is the answer, off. Let me make sure it's hand. I'm pretty sure it's hand, but yeah. Hand made, hand cuff, left hand. All right, who's the first one? Silver Fox. I'll bring up the next one. Silver Fox gets a cookie. All right, motion, poke, and down. Motion, poke, and down. Motion, poke, and down. Slow. Slow motion, slow poke, slow down. Okay, Velvet Hippo. Good job. Light, hot, and check is the next one. 
light, hot, and check. Well, you weren't that far behind, Lori James. <laughs> Some people just are good. They can type really fast, I think. <laughs> spot. Spot check, hot spot, and spotlight. Nice. Spotlight, hot spot, and spot check. Good job, Sassy. Next one is light, hot, and back. Light, hot, and back. I see guesses for flash, hot flash, flashlight, Flashback, flashlight, hot flash, flashback. All right, good job, Huli. We'll move on to the next one. Wood, liquor, and luck. Wood, liquor, and luck. Okay, I think I've got this one. I'll get the cookie ready. Let's see who gets it first. There we go. Evelyn's got it. Hard. Hardwood, hard liquor, and hard luck. Next one. We got drop off and stand, drop, off, and stand. Mm. Drop, off, and stand. Drop off and stand. Hmm. I like kick. Knight. No, I don't think it's knight. Hand. Handstand. Handstand works for the two bottom ones. I can't get the other ones. I, I like kick, though. I like kick. Mic drop. <laughs> Mic stand. That's not bad, Huli. I like kick as the answer. Yeah, drop kick, kick off, and kick stand. Who got that one? That was Silver Fox was first. All right, I'm going to do the cookie first. Silver Fox. You think night works also? Night drop, off night, night stand. Okay, I can see that. We'll do another another page of these. These aren't so bad. All right, we've got car, top, and ice. Car, top, and ice. <clears throat> Car, top, and ice. Mm, I'm not sure. No, not that. I'm coming up with a couple different things, but... Car, top, and ice. I see guess for box, cap, I 
I like box except for the except for the bottom one. I I don't know box ice or ice oh ice box. Ice box. Okay. So box car, box top and ice box. Okay. Box car, box top, ice box. All right, good job, Sassy. I did not see that one. Out, baby out. I don't know why there's an asterisk. <laughs> what does the asterisk mean? All right, I'm going to... The words are out, baby, and out. I'm going to see if there's an instruction because I don't always read the instructions. All right, there's nothing in the instructions. But we have an asterisk. Out, baby, and out. Cry. Cry out and outcry. Okay, baby, cry. Outcry, oh, cry, baby, cry out. Okay. It's not bad. Who got that one first? Velvet Hippo got that one first. Key, wall, and precious. Key, wall, and precious. I'm having a hard time getting a, a second word to match with precious. Oh, okay, now I got it. <laughs> now I got it. Yeah, stone. Keystone, stone wall, precious stone. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Two people think moments. Key moments, wall, moments wall, precious moments. Is there something that's called a moment's wall? Who's the first stone? It looks like it's Huli. At Huli. Corn, winter, and sweet. Nope, retract. No, no, it was moments. It worked for two of the three, I think. You like your precious better? <laughs> my, my precious. <laughs> All right, this was corn, winter, and sweet. Bread? Bread winner, sweet bread, and corn bread. Got it. Who's the first one? Sassy. Cookie for sassy. Bread money. Corn bread, bread winner, sweet bread. All right, now we've got top, inner, and test. Top, inner, and test. I'm not getting this one. Not right away, anyways. Top, inner, and test. Tube. Tube top. Inner tube. Tube test. Nice. Bye. <laughs> All right. Who got it first? That's Silver Fox. All right. We'll do a couple more of these. Here's another asterisk. I don't know what the asterisk means. Go there and seen. Maybe go means it goes on both. The asterisk means it goes on both sides. I have a guess, but I'm not. I'm not thrilled with it.
Go there and seen. Sassy's guessing four. Hmm. I was thinking over. Go over, over there, over seen. The sassy thinks it's four. Four is it? So four go, there, four, and four seen. Okay. I, I It does work. Everybody thinks four, four, four. Okay, I guess I'm the only one that thinks over. <laughs> go over, over there, over seen. Okay. Four go, there, four, four seen. <laughs> okay, I was wrong. Sometimes you got to admit when you're wrong. It's cookie for sassy. <laughs> All right, we got back, crawl, and work. Back, crawl, and work. What about the slow mo? I don't know. <laughs> back, crawl, and work. We're looking for a word that associates with all three of these words. Back, crawl, and work. So that says space. I like space. Out. Mm-hmm. I think I, I I think out is not bad. Out back, crawl out. Outwork or workout. I think space is the answer, though. Yeah, out is not bad, Evelyn. Though that's a good answer, Evelyn. The answer is space by Sassy. Thanks for stopping by, Linda. Read child and water. Been doing a lot of backspacing. <laughs> Read. Child and water. Read child and water. We're looking for a word that associates with all three of these words. No. <laughs> you're not first, you're left. Oh, proof. Nice. Proof read. Child proof. Waterproof. Nice. Velvet Hippo. I'll give a cookie in a minute. Blue lands and roots. Blue lands and roots. Four pictures, one word someday. I better tell. <laughs> uh, oh, participant skill levels improved. That's good to hear. We're trying to get better. Not just at doing more puzzles and riddles, but hopefully for armchair treasure hunts also. Who says bad? Badlands. Blue bad. Roots bad, bad roots. Mm. Maybe dark, dark blue, dark lands, dark roots. <laughs> well, that doesn't quite work. Blue lands and roots, deep. Says Silver Fox. Deep blue. Deep roots. Mm, not quite sure. Lori James says blood. Blue blood. Bloodlands? Blood roots? Is there a plant called blood roots? Hmm. We seem to have got one that's kind of stumped us a little bit, I think. Bluegrass, 
grasslands, grassroots, grassroots, bluegrass, grasslands, grassroots, a grassroots movement. I think Skylark got that one. There we go. Grassroots, so bluegrass, as in the music, grasslands, like the plains in the middle of the country, and grassroots, where, you know, like there's a movement and there's a grassroots movement that's built up from, yeah, so that, that's a good one. That, that might have been our toughest one of the day. Good job, Skylark. Go keep her Skylark. All right, this will be our last one. Butter, made, and run. And then we'll we'll do a different puzzle. Butter, made, and run. Butter, made, and run. Ah, milk. Butter, milk. Milk made and milk run. I don't need I don't need to look at the solution, but I'll look at it anyways. Buttermilk, milk made, milk run. Good job, Sky. <laughs> My milkshake brings the boys in the yard. Okay. All right, groaners. <laughs> All right. These are tricky word problems. All is not what it seems. We need to use our lateral brains for working on these. This is a category called groaners, where you're gonna, if you don't see the answer, you're gonna be upset that you didn't see it. So new type of puzzle now. I have two US coins that add up to 55 cents. One is not a nickel. What coins are they? <laughs> Milk and cookies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, everybody's retracting messages all over the place. Retracted, retracted, retracted. I have two coins. They add up to 55 cents. One of them is not a nickel. What coins are they? Boom, Skylar got it. The other one is a nickel. So one is not a nickel, but the other one is a nickel. A farmer had nine sheep and all but seven died. How many did he have left? Go keep her Skylark. <laughs> yeah, the other one is the nickel. So one of them is not a nickel of the two coins, but the other one is, can be a nickel. We did that one already? I think we did that one already too. But this is kind of a lateral thinking. Things are not what they seem. Hopefully some of these other ones we haven't seen before. Seven. Boom, seven, seven, seven. All but seven died. How many did he have left? He had seven, because all but seven had died. You think so you're getting these kind of groan groaners? <laughs> uh, who got it first? Velvet Hippo got it first. Velvet Hippo got the cookie. All right, next groaner. <clears throat> Three large people try to crowd under one umbrella, but nobody gets wet. How is this possible? Three large people try to crowd under one small umbrella, but nobody gets hurt. Nobody gets wet. How is this possible? <laughs> it's not raining. The sun is shining. There's no rain. That's why nobody's getting wet. All right. You got, I think you guys are... Your lateral brains are a little too much in tune with this. Shining, no rain. Yep, 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 yep. It's not raining. All right. You are a bus driver. At the first stop of the day, eight people get on board. At the second stop, four get off and 11 get on. At the third stop, two get off and six get on. At the fourth stop, 13 get off and one gets on. At the fifth stop, 
five get off and three get on. At the sixth stop, three get off and two get on. What color are the bus driver's eyes? <laughs> uh, oh my goodness. You are a bus driver. At the first stop of the day, eight people get on board. At the second stop, four get off, one get on. Third stop, two get off, six get on. At the fourth stop, 13 get off, one gets on. At the fifth stop, five get off and three get on. At the sixth stop, three get off and two get on. What color are the bus driver's eyes? <laughs> what the? Everybody's say, saying what their own eye color is. Blue, they be mine. My eyes are brown. Look in the mirror. What color are the bus? Okay, what what is the answer to this one? Whatever colors yours are, you're the bus driver. Ah, see, you are a bus driver. You. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Sassy. It's the first one to get it. The key word in the whole thing is you are a bus driver. If you take two apples from three apples, how many do you have? Mm, what's the hidden trick in this one? If you take two apples from three apples, how many do you have? If you take two apples from three apples, how many do you have? Three, three, two, two, two. Oh, you took two apples, so you have two. Oh, you took two apples. How many do you have? You have two apples. Five, five. <laughs> Again, the key word is you. How many do you have? If you take two apples, how many do you have? Two. All right, I like the explanation by Sassy. But the correct one is, the first one was two, I should say. It was Huli, the first one who said two. All right, I'll, I'll repeat the question again. If you take two apples from three apples, how many do you have? Because you take two apples, then you have two apples. A certain five-letter word becomes shorter when you add two letters to it. What is the word? Okay, I think we've said this one before. <laughs> a certain five letter word becomes shorter when you add two letters to it. What is the word? I'm going to get my cookie ready because I, I think we've had this one before. <laughs> Velvet Hippo got it. The word is short. Sonny got it also. But Velvet Hippo got it first. You add two letters, the word, two letters ER to short, and you make it shorter. Mm -hmm. An electric train is traveling northwest at 95 miles per hour, and the wind is blowing southwest at 95 miles per hour. In which direction does the smoke blow? Okay. At least I got this one. I'll get my cookie ready. <clears throat> An electric train is traveling northwest at 95 miles per hour, and the wind is blowing southwest at 95 miles per hour. In which direction does the smoke blow? There you go. Evelyn got it. Evelyn got it first, I should say. It's an electric train. They do not generate smoke. Some months have 30 days. Some months have 31 days. How many months have 28 days? Electric trains don't blow smoke. Correct, PJ, correct. <laughs> some months have 30 days. Some months have 31 days. How many months have 28 days? Ah, you guys, you guys are good. 
I'm gonna look at the answer, but I think you guys are right. All months have at least 28 days. <laughs> Skylark and Sassy were the first two. Skylark was first. <laughs> a train leaves from New York City heading t toward Los Angeles at 100 miles per hour. Oh, goodness. We're doing the SATs. <laughs> Three hours later, a train leaves from Los Angeles heading towards New York City at 200 miles per hour. Assume there's exactly 2,000 miles between LA and NYC. When they meet, which train is closer to New York City? Ah, that's not bad. That's not a bad one. A train leaves from New York City heading towards Los Angeles at 100 miles per hour. Three hours later, a train leaves from Los Angeles heading towards New York City at 200 miles per hour. Assume there's exactly 2,000 miles between LA and NYC. When they meet, which train is closer to New York City? Same distance equally. Equal distance, equidistant. All right, I, I think you got the answer, but maybe I'm not quite seeing The party train. <laughs> when they meet the same distance? All right, some people think equal distance. All right, ignoring all the numbers, to me, the New York train is always closest to New York City, no matter where. I'm thinking they're like on the same track. So the New York train, to me, the New York train will always be closer to New York City than the LA train. I'm thinking because they're on the same track is what I think. It's the caboose that matters. <laughs> Cookies don't matter. Oh, when they meet, they're both exactly the same distance. And alternate solution, if you consider meeting to be nose to nose, the one that left from your is closer to your... All right. Everybody gets a cookie. Cookies for everybody. <laughs> Time change is a factor. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Yeah, they meet at the same spot. They're exactly the same distance. Although if you consider meeting to be nose to nose, the one that left from New York City is closest by the length of the train. All right. So everybody gets a cookie. All right, next one of the, I don't know how many more of these groaners we're gonna do. Yeah, okay, this will be the last groaner. Like you said, the caboose. That's why everybody gets a cookie. Cookies for everybody. <laughs> a woman gave birth to two sons who were born on the same hour of the same day of the same year, but we're not twins, how is this possible? Uh, I, I kind of recognize this one. I recognize the question, I don't know what the answer is. A woman gave birth to two sons who were born on the same hour of the same day of the same year, but they were not twins, how is this possible? Like you said, the caboose. No, it, it, they had the answer of both the New York train and both trains were the same. So that's why I'm saying everybody had these good answers. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, we did this one before. You're right. Yeah, Sassy just beat you, Bonnie, because they're triplets. So they're not twins because they're not twins. They're triplets. A woman gave birth to two sons who were born on the same hour, same day, but they were not twins. They're not twins because they were triplets or quadruplets yes correct talk to mom <laughs> uh who got that one that was sassy yeah we did that one before and now that i see the answer i recognize it all right that's it this is my first two hour long show i don't know if i could do too many two hour long shows like this <laughs> but i had fun i hope everybody else had fun too 
Quadruplets is also a correct answer. Uh, giving it to Sassy because Sassy had triplets first before any other ones. But quadruplets also answers. I want to thank everybody for trying to make Mondays the best day of the week. Here on Purtle Monday, two-hour-long special. Thank goodness Calazars and k are coming back next week because then I don't have to do two hours again. <laughs> I don't know how they do a marathon show. I'm not a talker. I want to thank everybody for showing. Everybody work on the art of hidden messages. Send an email if you don't have it. It's a free treasure hunt. The art of hidden messages at gmail.com. Thank you, everybody. for. I hope you had fun. I hope we got a little bit better armchair treasure hunts, a little bit better puzzles and riddles. I will see everybody next week. Take care.